welcome to Los, Los Angeles. Angeles. Now this is one of the biggest and most exciting and most famous cities in the world. But when people come here, quite often they feel a little bit underwhelmed. I'm a Californian born and bred, and I gotta be honest with you, I do everything I can to avoid LA. It's got a reputation for being a little fake, a little soulless, and the traffic, no thank you. Yeah, our friends in LA love this place, but obviously it's one of those places that you need to know where to go, and that's why we've been asking them about where you should go when you come to LA. This is Tinseltown. You've seen it in the movies since you were a child, and now you're about to experience it for yourself. This is where dreams are made, but it's also a mega city, which is home to nearly 4 million people, so there are going to be good and bad parts. We want to show you where to spend your time so you'll want to come back. A challenge I've also set myself for Ali. I'm not going to spend lots of time at each site as there's loads to get through. So grab a pen and paper to note down your favourites and create your own epic LA itinerary. Let's start with the essentials. First up, the capital of Tinseltown. You've made it to Hollywood Boulevard, the home of celebrities, glitz and glamour, and of course, the Walk of Fame. Except, the only time you actually see some celebrities here is on Oscars Day, which is once a year. In fact, the rest of the time, it looks a bit like this. So, make sure you get in and out of here quickly. Don't expect to spend half a day here. Maybe Google which star you want to take a photo with and get out. I'm not saying don't come here at all, just don't plan on spending a whole day here. There are a few Instagram-worthy moments you should do, though. Hollywood Boulevard is where the Oscars red carpet is laid down, and you can follow in the footsteps of your favourite star by heading to the Dolby Theatre where the Academy Awards are held. At the back of the mall next door, you'll get your first glimpse of the Hollywood sign. It looks a little bigger in person, but it's still exciting to see it for the first time. It's not really worth doing it from here because the sign is so small. Don't worry, we're going to get a better chance to actually go even closer and get a real picture. There are loads of other attractions that you'd see in New York and London, like Ripley's Believe It or Not and Madame Tussauds Waxworks. He's not talking very much, is he? I know, my buddy's a little shy. He's a man of few words, The Rock. I never thought it. Maybe Ali is warming up to LA already. You'll also find the celebrity hand and footprints outside the Chinese theatre here. Our next activities are run from Hollywood Boulevard too. The celebrity house tour sounds super cheesy and tacky, and it kind of is, but when you're in Hollywood, you want to bump into a film star. Unfortunately, that probably won't happen, but this tour guarantees you'll see where they live. There are some really good stories you'll hear on these tours too that you'll bring home. If a house expedition doesn't sound like your thing, you can grab a bus tour. It starts from Hollywood Boulevard, but you can hop on and hop off around the city as many times as you like. This is a great chance to see lots of sights in one go. Make sure you have sunscreen and water and watch out because the last bus is quite early, so plan for that. Also, LA traffic can slow the tour down, so you might want to avoid this when you need to be somewhere later in the day. In LA. On the bus tour, you'll go past Beverly Hills and Rodeo Drive. These are both worth visiting for a photo, to people watch, and to pretend you can afford something in these famous designer shops. Again, don't plan on spending a whole day in these places. 20 minutes each will probably do. Next is one of the newest attractions in LA. The Academy Museum of Motion Pictures only opened in 2021. Here you'll learn about the history of movie making and see some special props, including Dorothy's ruby slippers. The unique sphere at the back houses a thousand seater movie theater and an event space which looks out over the city. Next door, you'll find the iconic streetlight installation where you can get that shot for the gram. This is attached to the County Museum of Art, which is being extended and rebuilt for 2024. Almost opposite is the Peterson Automotive Museum. It's home to hundreds of classic cars. But we're in Hollywood, so you're going to see a few that you'll recognize from the big screen. Okay, 
that's the uber touristy essentials over with. On to a few places that you'll love. First up, Universal Studios. Yes, this is home to the new epic Super Mario World and Hogwarts. You'll also get to enter Jurassic Park if you're brave enough. You excited? You're brave. I still can't believe Jude went on this. I got really well. Do you want to do it again? They also have a studio tour as part of your ticket. Now this isn't the fake one recreated in Florida. This is still a working backlot and where blockbusters such as Back to the Future and War of the Worlds were filmed. You have to queue for the tour like a ride so it's easy to take it for granted. Los Angeles is home to the movie studios, so try to book a tour that isn't part of a theme park too. We've seen recreations of the Friends sets, but you'll go to the real one during the Warner Brothers tour. While at Sony Pictures, you'll get to go into the worlds of Ghostbusters and Spider-Man. At Paramount, you'll get to sit on the Forrest Gump bench. While we're still on the movie theme, you can do your own movie tour for free. Yep. Google your favourite films and head to those addresses. You'll easily find the Back to the Future house or the school in Greece. The modern family houses, the father of the bride home. It might be your only chance to ever do this. Be respectful of course if it's someone's home. Right, I'm gonna let you in on some California slang. People don't speak in distances as far as 5 miles, 10 miles, 15 miles here. You don't say that. No, no, no. You say 5 minutes without traffic or 10 minutes without traffic. Meaning that journey is actually going to take you about half an hour to get there with traffic in the middle of the day. But if you went in the middle of the night at like 2 in the morning, it would be 5 minutes. Yeah, so 5 minutes without traffic. No big deal. Take me 5 minutes, right? No, no, no. Leave half an hour. Traffic. Yeah. Right, back to the list, and it's time to get away from the city streets. The Griffith Observatory is another big LA attraction as well, and the cool thing is to go inside it's all free, but you do have to pay to park up. Now it's $10 an hour, which is quite steep. Um, there is a free parking lot down the very bottom of the hill, you've got about a mile to walk up. But my top tip is it's free up until midday. So if you come here before 12, that means you get to come up here for free. You could easily spend an hour or two going through the observatory and seeing the exhibits. But most people just come up here to get their Instagram shots of downtown. There's also got some shots of the Hollywood sign as well. Now, even though when you're here, it looks pretty good for a photo, but we can do better, can't we? Yeah. We can do better. So let's go off and find out where we can get an even better shot and upgrade our photo again. Hiking up to the Hollywood sign is a real adventure and a unique LA experience. You can hike to this point and get a shot like this, or you can climb to the top and go behind the sign. If you don't want to walk at all, head to Lake Hollywood Park, which has the best view in between. We've made a whole video on the Hollywood sign hike and even timed it for you. I'll link to that at the end of this one. While you're in the Hollywood Hills, I'd recommend stopping and having a look around. This is where many movie stars and pop stars live, especially when they first become big. It's a rite of passage. Here, you're hanging out in their part of town, so you're ten times likely to spot a celebrity buying some milk or bread in a shop here than you would do hanging out on Hollywood Boulevard for weeks. Harry Styles even gave away one of his favourite hangouts in a song, although I don't ever think the coffee will ever be out at the Beechwood Cafe. The staff will tell you his favourite table. If you've forgotten the song, we've made a YouTube short which I'll link to at the end. Time to head to the beach. 
there's not one official LA beach. It has 20. Now, I'm not going to go through all of them with you, but here's a couple. Venice Beach is the one you've seen with the skateboarding ramps and boardwalk with Muscle Beach. The actual beach is lovely, especially by the pier, but the boardwalk isn't too family friendly, I'd say. I much prefer taking people to Santa Monica. Here you'll find a safe, upmarket and family friendly beach city. High end shops and restaurants are just a short walk from the sand. If you're here on a Wednesday or Saturday morning, you should definitely check out the downtown farmer's market. It's not just the locals that come here to get some fresh produce. The actual restaurateurs and chefs come down here every week as well uh, to try and get some of the best and freshest meats and vegetables they can find for the table. And it's also a really fun place just to walk around and people watch. The best place to hang out though is the beach with its two miles of sand. We were here in August and had more than enough space to fly a kite. Santa Monica is also home to the famous pier, which has its own funfair. Time now for a few hidden gems that only the locals really know about. First up, the original farmer's market and the grove. These are just a few minutes away from Hollywood Boulevard and offer some normality away from the craziness of the Walk of Fame areas. The farmer's market's been here since 1934 and it's more of a street food market today. You'll find tasty cuisine from around the globe. Come here for breakfast, lunch, dinner or all of them. The Grove feels like a real-life Disney Main Street as it's so perfect and very art deco. Here you can go shopping, go to a restaurant or watch a movie. Let's move into downtown now and we'll start with Grand Central Market. This is the cool place to hang out and grab some food. In fact, it's just been inducted into the LA Times Best Restaurants Hall of Fame. This is perfect for the family who can't decide what to eat together, as you can all get something different. It's packed with vendors who've gone on to become big restaurants. Across the road from here, you'll see an interesting cable car. The Angel's flight opened in 1901. The Victorian piece of engineering is a cheap and cheerful attraction. Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone made a song and dance about it when they got to the top in La La Land. You're in classic downtown LA here, so you'll spot loads of buildings you've seen in movies over the years. Just north is a little oasis in the city. This is Echo Park, where you can't help but get into the chill, hipster vibe. Even I had my first go at Tai Chi. It doesn't get much more LA than this. <laughs> on the lake, you can rent your own swan, so you can glide on the water with the skyscrapers firmly in the distance again. There is an out of this world experience just one block away. The Time Travel Mart is the one-stop shop for all you time travelers. Step inside this quirky non-profit to go back in time or head to the future. Just waiting for myself to answer. Have you got some LA ideas? Add them to the comments for others to see. Our next California video is here for you now. See you in the next one.